how do I know what's the right price for an unlisted company? I mean, on the stock market, I can sort of just see what that means, what 390 rupee means, what's it's trading at and so on. But how do I figure this out when someone comes and offers, hey, here's this unlisted company at this this many rupees, what should I do? You know, this is a great point because if it was simple enough, I would have told you this is the price. The problem is VCs have come and complicated the whole lot. Now, earlier it was be like, oh, I'll buy equity shares. They're equity shares. Then there were models created on top of equity shares. So they're equity shares, but they're not as equal. They're more equal than equity shares. So what does that mean? I mean, you have preference shares. Then you have compulsorily convertible preference shares. I mean, you can convert it to equity if you want, but they're preference. So they give you ownership, but they also retain a higher level of ownership than anybody else. So a Series A investor will do a CCPS, a compulsory convertible share. And then you may have a Series B doing a CCPS. A Series C does a convertible debt, a compulsory convertible debenture. Then there are optionally convertible preference shares. There's all sorts of things that can happen, multiple series. So you may be looking at the company and saying, oh, there are only 100,000 shares. This sounds great. But it could be 10 million shares of in CCPS after conversion. So there could be 100,000 CCPS convertible to 10 million shares. So you have to look at the dilution in total and then figure out what price per share. So if you think this company is going to make a 1,000 crores in profit, how many shares is that 1,000 crores divided into? It could be 1 crore, it could be 5 crores, it could be 10 crores. The price per share will obviously change if it's 1 crore versus 5 crores versus 10 crore shares. So to unravel this, you need to get the entire cap table. You need to get the terms and conditions for each CCPS. Blah, 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 and you need to get a bunch of other things which are called terms. Now this is where, I'm sorry, but life takes a devious turn at some points. Now you suddenly start needing PhDs to understand this stuff. Okay, So there will be a guy who comes in a series A and have something called liquidation preference. This sounds great, but liquidation preference is simple. Uh, I'm giving you this much money. I'm getting so many shares. But if I give you this much money, if you sell the company at some point, first I take out my this much company, not my money. That's mine. On top of that, that is called a 1x liquidation preference. If I do a 2x, that means if I give you x, I'll take 2x of the money out first. Whatever is remaining is split between the shareholders. That's a liquidation preference. Then there's something called a right of first refusal. So in a company, uh, VC can say, fine, we will invest in this company. But if any of you shareholders sell to anybody else, you will first come to me and then give me the shares at that price. I have the right of first refusal, so I can buy the shares from you at this point. So let us say I wanted to buy a share in some company, maybe, I don't know, Uber or o Ola or something like that. But I went in and said, I love this company. I'm going to buy it. I did all the analysis. I did, oh, 300 rupees per share. And then I go, the, the seller wants to sell it, but he says, oh, I have to go to my board. The board says there's an ROFR, right of first refusal. The VC says, I don't like Deepak Shana. I don't want him to invest. So I'll, you know, what, what price is he paying? 300 rupees per share? I'll pay you 300 rupees per share and I'll buy it. So I did all this work for nothing. So there is that problem that you might end up. And what happens then is the sellers are aware this is a problem, but the buyers are also aware that this is a problem. So they're like, listen, why should I do this work if anyway you have an ROFR, right? So your value of your unlisted share comes down because you don't have a seller anymore or you have less sellers. So you should in your mind say, if I'm buying an unlisted share where there is an ROFR, it automatically lessens its value for me. So I should pay a lower value for it if I want to buy it because there's an ROFR. So... Then there are other clauses, some ratchet clauses, for instance, the company raises at 100 crores of valuation, but because life goes bad, it comes down to 50 crores. The 100 crore investor says, well, I gave you money at 100 crores, you raise more money at 50 crores, my money should be taken as if it was raised at 50 crores, because you raised a down round. So this is a ratchet clause, it increases somebody else's shareholding. And if you were a minority shareholder in this company, it, it reduces your shareholding even further. So you should know about this. Then a bunch of other tag, tag along, drag along clauses. And which tranche are you buying? How many shares does it convert to? What are you buying? What effective ownership does it mean? All of these is a little bit of a pain to understand. Nobody does it because everybody like, I trust you boss, 390 means something. This is what it is. But, you know, honestly, as, as a person who's been in the space, there is a lot of misinformation going around. So somebody can tell you something and suddenly you'll be like, excuse me, wait, 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 what is that? For instance, right now, NSC is going through a bonus issue. Now, it's a one is to six bonus issue. That means if you buy the share at 5,000 rupees, you should be getting six shares for it. But there's a record date. I don't know when that record date is. If you buy after that record date, you should be paying one-sixth the price per share. 
you don't know when the record date is you think you know but you need to go and ask somebody in nse first boss is there a bonus going on tell me the date on which the record date is so if i buy after that date i will pay 16 the price if i pay before, buy before that date i will and please tell me that this is true now the number of people who know this enough to ask this question are probably 1% I mean, they may also getting a response may not be trivial. Yeah, I mean. and getting a response may not be trivial. So, if you know there's a bonus going on, literally give it a month. So, boss, you finish your bonus, bonus, and you can also go to MCA and download all these documents. If there's a bonus issue, they would have put it in their board meeting. They would have put it in their this thing. So, they, it, some minutes may come across. Having said that, you still need to verify. So, all of this stuff is go, going there. Now, let me talk, talk to you about like. this liquidity liquidation preference and how it screws what you think let's say a company has a valuation of say 200 uh, of 150 crores so it's been valued at 150 the vc is putting in 100 more so that means now it's valued at 250 100 plus the 150 earlier you have let's say 5% of this company because you were an i don't know early helper or something like that now you're thinking i have 5% of 150 which is 7.5 crores which is great now i have 7.5 crores worth of something that is 250 that means 3% of the company which is also great and this is the liquidation preference of 1x this was a 200 250 crore valuation now something happens that company cannot be sold at 250 crores somebody makes an offer for 150 crores they decide to take it now i think oh well you know what 150 crores i still have 3% of the company so i should get 4 and a half crores it's still not too bad because i invested maybe 1 crore in the business or 2 crores in the business i'm still getting some money Here's where the problem is. Liquidation preference of one x means hundred crores, which was invested by the VC, goes back to the VC. So out of the one fifty crores that was paid for the company, hundred crores goes straight to the VC. Only fifty crores is left. Maybe as a participating preferred, in which case your three percent is of that remaining fifty crores. So you get only one point five crores back. So you were worth seven point five crores at some point. You thought it fell to only four point five crores. but it's actually worth 1.5 you had no idea about this but you should have known because the lick prep effectively hurts you uh, at this point this can happen at any stage of a business and i think if you're aware then you should know this and mark this down there are ways to mark it down from a premium but essentially take each of these points and say boss i'll give you 5% less for this and i'll give you 5% less for that and so on 